Welcome biologists to this session where we're going to take a look at the light dependent stage of photosynthesis. So here I have a diagram of the thylakoid membrane which is inside the chloroplast. Now don't forget the thylakoid membrane can be folded into stacks called grana and it's within these membranes we have certain proteins that enable this light dependent stage of photosynthesis. So on this side of the thylakoid membrane I have the stroma and on the other side I have what's known as the intermembrane space. So the intermembrane space is here and then on the other side over here somewhere and have the other side of the thylakoid membrane because it kind of wraps around in loops. So within this thylakoid membrane I have a photosystem 2, a photosystem 1 and ATP synthase. So the first stage of the light dependent reaction is photolysis of water. So this is where water is broken up into hydrogen ions, oxygen and electrons. Now the oxygen is a byproduct and is released um, from the plant um, through diffusion through the stomata. Um, however, the electrons are used into photosystem 2. So what happens here is the photosystem, the pigments inside the photosystem 2 will absorb the energy from the, uh, the light, the photons of light, and they'll pass on this energy to the electron. And this will excite the electron to a higher energy level. This electron then, then passes down a series of electron carriers and through a process of various redox reactions, which is where they gain and lose electrons, energy is released which actively transports hydrogen ions into the intermembrane space. So what then happens is my electron passes into photosystem 1 where again the photosynthetic pigments absorb energy from the photon of light and pass that onto the electron which is which is excited to a higher energy level. Uh, so I'm just going to leave the electron there for now and come back to it shortly. But what I've got now is a buildup of hydrogen ions in the intermembrane space and this is also known as a proton gradient. So this proton gradient that has been established will mean that the hydrogen ions can flow through this ATP synthase which is an enzyme and they flow through ATP synthase in a process called chemiosmosis. Now chemiosmosis is the process where ATP is made using ATP synthase within a membrane like this thylakoid membrane. So what the ATP synthase does is it adds an inorganic phosphate to ADP to form ATP. And the hydrogen ion, which has come through the ATP synthase, will then be added onto NADP along with the electron to form NADPH. So this is reduced NADP. And NADP is a coenzyme which can be used to transport the hydrogen electron now into the light independent stage. So that process that we've just gone through there is called um, non-cyclic photophosphorylation. Now we need to know about non-cyclic photophosphorylation, but also cyclic photophosphorylation. So in non-cyclic photophosphorylation that we've just looked at, as you can see, the, end, the, the electron passes through photosystem two, along the electron carriers, and then into photosystem one, which is where after photosystem one, it then binds to NADP. But in cyclic photophosphorylation, what we have here is photosystem 2 is not used at all. So the electron passes down a series of electron carriers and through a process of redox reactions produces releases energy which actively transports the hydrogen ions into the intermembrane space. This electron will then be excited to a higher energy level from the energy absorbed from the photon of light in photosystem 1 and then the electron will re-enter the uh, electron transport chain then pass down the electron carriers through that through the redox reactions, releasing energy again. Now, the reason why a plant would undergo cyclic photophosphorylation is usually if there is a limitation on the water availability. Because in this particular example of cyclic photophosphorylation, the electron is constantly recycled. Now, don't forget, in the previous example of non-cyclic photophosphorylation, my electron here came from the photolysis of water. So if I don't have a lot of water available, it means that the, the electron can't be replenished. So therefore, the plant will switch to cyclic photophosphorylation. And what this allows the plant to still do is still to create ATP through ATP synthase because by still passing the electrons through the electron carriers, it means that hydrogen ions are still going to be actively transported into the intermembrane space. I'm still going to get that proton gradient and therefore chemosmosis can occur. So here I have a table just summarising what's going on there. You do need to know the differences and similarities between those two. Guys, good luck with your exams. All the best and use as much scientific terminology.